Hi world, my name is Essie. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Begotten by Love. If it's your first time, welcome. If it's your second, third, gazillion time, welcome back. So today I want to talk about identity in Christ. This is a follow-up or the second part of a series I began called The Lion King Analogy. So in my last video, I gave you an overview of the storyline of The Lion King. I hope you've mastered who is who. There was a cub named Simba. There was a lion called Mufasa who is Simba's father and Mufasa had a brother called Scar. Scar killed Mufasa. Scar blamed Simba and Simba ran away. Simba was raised by two amazing animals, Pumba and Timon, and eventually he had to confront his past and go back home. In the previous video, I was asking, why is it that life tends to get believers down? Why is it that circumstances can make a Christian feel like they're not, they not able to handle situations? Can Are there situations that make Christians feel like they're not what... The Bible says they are or they're not who the Bible says they are so what are some of the things that create these discrepancies at least in our minds that cause us to doubt what God has said about us in this word and so that is what we were really looking at and today I'd really like to start from another scene in the Lion King so when Simba meets his father his father says to him you have forgotten me and Simba says of course not I would never forget you and his father emphasizes and says that you have forgotten who you are and in so doing you have forgotten me. And so his father starts narrating a few things that he had shared with him in the past, you know, just to remind him. And at the end of the conversation, he just keeps saying, remember, remember over and over again, even as his spirit departs. That scene was so powerful for me because it depicts the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I talked about unless we see God accurately, we will never see ourselves accurately. And I brought us to a place of understanding that it is the word of God that will help us see who we have become in Christ Jesus, right? You know, when Jesus was about to die on the cross, he was speaking with his disciples and he was assuring them that I will not leave you as orphans because it was easy for them to feel like, what are we going to do when you're gone? But Jesus had a plan, you know, from the onset that he would not leave his disciples and those who would come after, such as you and I, as orphans, he would never leave us, he would never forsake us. And he said, I will send you another helper, another after his own kind. He sent us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. They are one and the same. The difference is the Holy Spirit dwells in you and I. Jesus was tangible in the flesh. The Holy Spirit is not tangible in the flesh, but he dwells in every believer. And the role of the Holy Spirit, as Jesus depicted it in John 14, I think it's verse 26 that talks about, he will teach you all things and he will bring all things to your remembrance. And it was such a powerful verse for me because it depicts the Holy Spirit in a unique way. In many churches, the Holy Spirit has been reduced to a force, you know, a wind that makes people fall or act funny or act weird. But Jesus here gives us a very beautiful, really, description of the Holy Spirit, that his role is to teach us all things. And if you continue, if you read John 14, 15, and 16, you'll find a lot of descriptions of the Holy Spirit and his role in our lives. And teaching us here would be according to Christ, or he would teach us Christ, what does that mean? Like, we have been born again in the identity of Christ, and so the Holy Spirit will only ever point us to Jesus. He will only ever point us to the Word. The Holy Spirit cannot give you something that He has not documented in the Word. So, something incredible about the Holy Spirit is that He teaches us all things. And that is remarkable because that means that. It's like having a personal tutor. And of course, this doesn't undermine that we have teachers of the word or preachers who nurture us. No, but even they should be led of the Spirit of God. So it's a collective work. You know, whether I am in fellowship with other believers, whether I am sitting under a man or woman of God to be taught, ultimately the teacher or the voice that is being heeded to 
is the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. And what this also means is that Scripture cannot be understood outside of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand the Word of God. And that is why he plays such a crucial role in the lives of believers. And it's beautiful how the Father always wanted us to understand his word, always wanted us to understand him. We see this first with Jesus coming in the flesh. God revealed himself to mankind through Jesus Christ because we see that Jesus gives face, so to speak, to an invisible God. He expresses that which we did not initially know about the Father. And in fact, we did not know God as Father until Jesus Christ came. So this is a beautiful aspect of the Holy Spirit. He teaches us to call God Abba, Father. He teaches us that we are adopted sons. And another thing that the Holy Spirit does other than teach is that he reminds us, he causes us to remember all things. And of course, what he causes us to remember is in line with what we have been taught, what he has taught us. So there's moments where we will need to be reminded. There's moments where we will sit under the word. We will sit to study the word for ourselves. We will sit amongst other believers and fellowship. We will sit under our men and women of God to be taught and discipled. And then there are, there are moments where no teaching or no learning is taking place, but there is a time of remembrance. And why this scene was so important to me is because um, Simba, as he had run away from home, he, he was raised by a, a meerkat and a warthog. He's a lion. So he began to live like these two creatures. That means he was feeding on insects. He wasn't, you know, hunting like him. You know, he was naturally born to do. He was tame. He was domesticated. He was not in his prime like a lion should be. That's one. Two, he was living in shame and in condemnation. And another scene really that shaped my thinking on this was, um, there's a moment where Simba, as he's now much older, is laying on the grass with Pumba and Timon, and they're gazing at the stars. And um, Pumba asks, what are those shiny things up in the sky? And you know, Timon says, those are fireflies stuck to that bluish black thing. And then, um, you know, the, the, the work of Pumba says, I always thought there were balls of gases, you know, just burning up millions of miles away. And then, you know, Timon laughs at him. And then they both ask Simba, what do you think? And then he says, someone told me long ago that, you know, all the great kings of the past watch us from the stars. And the two friends, Pumba and Timon, began to laugh at him, saying that that was stupid. And, you know, he laughed along with them, but you could tell that he was uncomfortable and he left the scene. And why this scene also spoke to me so powerfully is because um, other than the shame and guilt that he carried, he got raised by two animals that were not his kind. So much as they were friendly, much as they did not have any evil intentions, they shaped his mindset, they shaped how he thought, how he conducted himself. So much so that, you know, um, there's a scripture that talks about do not be swayed by philosophies. One in, the, in, the, in their description of the stars, the first description about it being firefly stuck on a bluish thing is just, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous theory. And yet when we walk on earth today, there are many philosophies, there are many theories that are just as equally ridiculous. And then one was also correct scientifically, meaning he spoke a factual statement in that stars are balls of gases burning up. That is scientifically true. But the answer Simba had was the most correct. Why? Because this is what he had had from the Father. If you compare it with Christianity, there are scientific facts, there are philosophies of man, and then there is truth. Truth is the word of God. Truth is the voice of God. And that is what stands the test of time. This is what is superior to any other voice we might possibly hear or, you know, encounter in our lives. So people might give us facts, scientific facts, but we stand upon the word of God, which is true. And do you know that truth transcends fact? 
and philosophies are, are based on opinion they're not based on even tested points so at the end of the day they will remain theories and again this can, this cannot outdo truth truth is not based on opinion truth cannot change it is not wavering and fact will be adjusted based on whatever changes for example i was a baby when i was born but that fact changed as i grew i am no longer a baby because the fact <laughs> has been outdone by time and growth but truth is i am a son of god and nothing can change that no amount of growth can outdo it nothing can shift the truth which is in the word of god but what had happened with simba is that he had forgotten what his father had told him and sometimes as christians we might heed voices that are not our father's voice and this can shape our lives in one way or another we will live as though we are not truly kings and priests we will live as though we are not truly sons of god yet we are that is what he has called us he has called us kings and priests he has called us sons of the living god and so it is so important for us as christians to constantly draw from the word of god above all else because the wor- the world will never educate a son of god why because we are born of the incorruptible seed there is nothing on earth that is incorruptible other than the word of god and that is what we have been born of and so it is so important to be informed by the voice of god this is in line with identity the moment you begin heeding voices that are not the voice of the father you will step out of line and of course i'm not referring to backsliding because what has been done in your spirit cannot be undone but you can walk your day to day as though you are not a son for instance you might find yourself believing wrong things concerning god you might believe maybe god is angry with me you might think maybe what god said to me is irrelevant in this situation or you know those moments where you say god god will understand you know if i do abc you understand when we try to make excuses when we want, try to even twist the word try to validate or justify our actions based on philosophies of men or facts of life rather than the truth which is God's word and so it is so important for the christian to align their mind to align their thoughts to the word of god the moment simba encountered his father and his father told him remember it did not take long it was just a matter of minutes this is the beauty of christianity this is the beauty of our walk and our fellowship with jesus there is no separation there is no point where we cease to be one with him and the moment this was settled in his heart he ran away he didn't even tell his friends good by it's his friends who later on ran to to join him as well <laughs> so the moment he had his father's voice everything shifted he was bold and he returned back home and he was able to take his place as king he was able to rule he was able to be the king that he was born to be and this is the same for every believer the moment we listen to the voice of god everything shifts we are able to take our position as kings and priests we are able to approach god as father and acknowledge that we are sons it shifts everything about how we carry ourselves out what we believe about ourselves and it gives us such a confidence even in the word of god when we ignore the word of god we lose confidence in it because we are not constantly feeding on it we are feeding on something else falsehood can make the truth seem like it is a lie but when we are constantly feeding on the truth we will recognize falsehood immediately and this is where the believer is called to be in a place of growing in the knowledge of who they are according to the word of god this is the most powerful position that any son of god any child of god can ever take a place of knowing who they are according to the word of god amen thank you so much for watching i can't wait to see you next time please be sure to leave a comment in the comment section if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe and tell your friend and tell your friends to tell their friends literally tell the whole world Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.